Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs, Video Geek Productions, The Brian Smith YouTube Channel, Matchbox Mark, Jonathan Von Nash, and Wade Hendricks. Well, if you're going to do your first red line restoration, I suggest you start small, start simple, and go with something not worth much. Or do this. Wow. Oh, hey there, folks. Chuck here. Yep, I'm back. And uh, got some new toys, as you can see. Uh, new computer, some new graphics, and really a whole new approach to the channel, which hopefully you'll see in this season. It's uh, really cool to finally have some of the old toys that I used to work with in my old professional job, because now I can do things like this and like this. And also this. But enough about that. Let's get to the build. This is my first real red line. I did a red line challenge last year, only to discover that the car I bought wasn't actually a red line, but was almost a red line. You can see that video up in the link in the corner. Ooh, that arrow's new too. This is unequivocally a real deal red line. A sweet 16 Dodge Diora that I got from Nick Mopar on Instagram. So thank you, Nick. Since this is the first real red line I have in my position, and it's the only Hot Wheels casting that I know for a fact has a slant six engine in it, much like the Flying Valiant that this channel is named after, and my truck. So it seemed like a natural fit for my first red line build. But before we get too much farther, let's get to the breakdown. First, since this is by far the most valuable die cast I've worked on, I figured I'd mix things up a little and go for a straightforward restoration. Well, a restoration plus. I wanted to polish the body to a mirror finish and use some parts from the Redline shop since Paul over at Diecast Graveyard really seems to like what they do. I did want to recolor this Diora to resemble the original Dodge Diora using the closest match I could find from the Spectre Flame paint over at the Redline shop. And since I'm placing an order with them already, replace the wheels. And I just happened to recently receive a reproduction Diora from my brother Justin. Thank you, Justin. So not only did I have the surfboards I needed, but I had a replacement windshield as well. Ready? Punch that subscribe button. Let's boogie. I snapped apart the two castings and picked the parts I needed from the reproduction. After stripping the paint, I threw all the pieces into my sonic cleaner to make sure everything was neat and tidy. And then it was off to the garage for the polishing wheel. This was a purchase I made back when I was restoring the full-size car that I worked on, and it's come in very handy since then. It's definitely overkill for this kind of job, and I've definitely flung more cars across the garage than I care to admit, but that's another story. I used basic metal polish that you get from Harbor Freight for polishing up steel and follow that up with some flits on the soft paddle wheel. And this thing returned to an almost perfect mirror finish. There was some wear through on the zinc on the bed of the truck, but that area was getting painted black anyway, so it didn't matter. I was pleased that the toning was at a minimum, even though I was sort of looking forward to doing some rudimentary plating again. But we'll save that for another build. This was honestly the scariest part of the process because not only am I not used to using two-stage paint in my airbrush, but I'm also definitely not used to spraying directly on a smooth surface like polished zinc as opposed to a rougher surface like primer that is designed to take the paint that I can normally just plaster on and be fine. But I took old Uncle Polly's advice and laid on the paint ultra thin. I just barely misted it on at first and followed it with a succession of gradually thicker layers until I had the finish that I wanted. It ended up being about five coats. Once I had it perfect, it went into the dehydrator and cured for a full day. I then carefully masked off the areas that I wanted to paint flat black, like the accent area up front and the bed cap on the back. And I used some of the Redline Shop vinyl top finish which laid on very well, but it is a little sensitive to touching, so be very careful handling it afterwards. I then carefully removed the tape, only to discover that the paint also had come with it. Oh boy. So it was back to the stripper, the cleaner, the polisher, paint again in the dryer, mask, lay the black paint on again, and peel the paint off again. So strip, clean, polish, paint again, 
mask, and finally, third time was the charm. The back taillight piece had more of a flat red look to it, and this is the one area aside from the mirror finish polishing where I decided to step things up a little bit and go with an enamel taillight red. Since it was such a large piece of the back end, I thought a metallic would really make that taillight complement the mirror finish and the Spectre Flame paint. It was time to break out the brand new wheels and snap it all together, and it wouldn't be a Flying Valiant build without the decal and the number. So one last time, let's take a look at what we had to start with. This vintage Sweet 16 Dodge Diora Redline, mostly complete, but definitely in need of some love. And let's see what we ended up with. Oh yeah, this is much better. My first Spectra Flame on my first Redline and my first Sweet 16. And it all came together beautifully thanks to Nick Mopar and my brother Justin. So thank you both for helping me make this happen. Besides them, this channel wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for my amazing patrons. You saw the bandit level at the beginning, but I also want to thank the Rockford level patrons, Mid Island Customs Diecast, Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers, Double B's Customs, Mr. Zanzibar91, Gary Tasker, and Aunt Tracy. I'd also like to thank the Douglas level patrons, The Good Bad Better Podcast, Jordan Kleinen, Curtis Crafts, Jim Silva, and Kamikaze Customs. Please check out everyone's links in the description below. I really appreciate that they are giving me not only their time, but their financial support, and I would like to return the favor by making sure they get plenty of attention thrown their way. So be sure to drop by and tell them I sent you. But hey, enough about me. This is something else I want to try that's a little bit different from previous episodes. Uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the other builders out there that I feel need a little more attention for their channels that are pretty underrated as far as talent goes. And uh, the first spot I want to give a shout out to is to The Customizer. And uh, he is a really cool dude. He makes some really awesome work and he has been cranking out the cars lately. I think at one point he was building six cars a day and uh, it's, it's incredible. The dude is prolific and he's really talented. He has a great eye for color and detail. And I bought a few cars from him and they are fantastic. He just had a, a little one enter his family and uh, and he's selling off some cars to raise money for the expenses that come with having a new kid. So uh, definitely give him a shout out. Go subscribe to his channel. Tell him I said hi. He's sitting at about 220 subscribers as I'm recording this. Thanks for checking him out. Well, I don't know about you, but it feels really good to be back. I've got a lot of builds that have already been completed, and you're going to be seeing those coming out on this channel very, very soon. They may not necessarily be in chronological order, but they are going to be in order of the builds that I can get out quickest. This was definitely the one that was the quickest. And while it was technically the most simple, it was emotionally probably the most trying build I've ever done in my life, and I probably won't do a shiny build like this again anytime soon. <laughs> but it was a fun challenge, and I hope you appreciated me trying something new. Like all my builds, unless otherwise stated, this one is for sale. If you're interested in it, you can email me at flyingvaliant at gmail.com, and we can talk about it. You can also support the builds over at flyingvaliant.com. I just saw that that's I where all my patrons hang start out. adding patrons through YouTube itself, and... If I have that set up in time, check out all that information below. If not, stay tuned because that'll be coming shortly if you want to help support the channel that way. On top of getting my videos at least a day early, all my patrons have an opportunity to win a prize once a month. And I recently upgraded the monthly prize to being one of the customs that I've built for this channel. So if you're interested in owning one of my customs, that's another way to do so and support the channel while you're doing it. And if you really, really like what I do and want to tell the world about it, you can get Flying Valiant merch over at my brother's Tee Public and Red Bubble stores. Those links are in the description below. He also has some awesome diecast themed designs you should really check out. And hey, while you're clicking on things, why don't you give Flying Valiant on Instagram and Facebook a follow? That's honestly the best thing that you can do to help this channel out is to like the content, share, subscribe, comment, bother people on the street about it, any way you can help get the word out. As always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, Stay fresh, cheese bags.